was on a particularly warm February evening that we headed south to Kentucky to return to Daniel Boone National Forest. We had been here before during our trip to Red River Gorge, but today we'd be going just east of it to the Clifty Wilderness. We would be meeting at the trailhead, though Andrew and Brian were taking a while. As we drove, the sun started setting and dusk was just around the corner. Our chances of making it before dark seemed slim. But eventually, we made it and met up with Robbie. Now, it was time to review the plan. We'd be taking the Wildcat Trail east, camping somewhere tonight. The next day, we'd hike along the Swift Camp Creek Trail and find a campsite there. Finally, we'd make our way out by following the same trail to the west. And then, it was off to the trailhead. By now, dusk had fallen, but it was still plenty warm. We got our bags ready and set out on the trail. The first portion of the trail was fairly flat and easy to hike, which was especially nice in the dark of night. But the lack of light didn't stop us from finding some interesting plants. This is actually a tulip poplar tree, uh, which is its good to know that there's, there's tulip poplars here because then we can start good fires. See the bark has that familiar cantaloupe look, albeit covered in lichen. And then up there, it almost looks like those branches have like claws on them. Um, and that's just where the tulip seed pods kind of fall off. And a little early in their year, you'll see this very flowery looking structure. But now it just looks like some wildebeest arm. <laughs> so here we've got some holly, uh, very familiar sight during Christmas. I think a lot of people get it confused with mistletoe though. I mean, if it were winter, it'd be appropriate because we also have Christmas ferns down here on the ground, which are evergreen ferns. And up here, we've got another evergreen coniferous tree, the Eastern Hemlock. Also, giant magnolia leaves. <laughs> so. Other than some creepy crawlies, it felt like we were the only ones moving about beneath the stars tonight. But the stars weren't the only lights we saw from the trail. This thing is about to break right under us. <laughs> okay, so what were you saying? <laughs> We just saw like two cars pass by on the road right behind us. <laughs> I thought we were deep in the wilderness and then suddenly like, two headlights just go. <laughs> <laughs> it feels good to be out at night though. It's like uh, so refreshing. I can't believe I'm sweating right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still February. <laughs> it's February 24th. The sweat log though is definitely seeping through my pants. <laughs> After sitting for a bit, we decided to check out the road that was just off the trail. At least we know we wouldn't get stranded. <laughs> So the, the trail is just down there. That's where Brian's at. Yeah, it's really bizarre. It's like <laughs> warm in February. We got this road right here. <laughs> On this log, we've got a lot of these shelf little shelf fungi growing. This here, this like sort of fuzzy stuff, is a turkey tail fungus, and it's always got these like bands of color. And it's actually edible. You can uh, cook it in soups and drink it. But right next to it is false turkey tail, which has this sort of white color and um, orange banding. Not edible, as far as I know. But turkey tail, even though it's sort of late in the year, usually it has a really vibrant blue color or maybe a black and white. It actually varies in color. So Something that usually seems uninteresting is actually mildly interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we continued on, and before long, we came to an unmarked split in the path. Huh. Yeah, it looks like a junction. Well, I guess we'll have to consult the map here. I wonder if one of these leads to a campsite. <laughs> Ooh. like the sound of that. Me <laughs> too. <laughs> so we just want to be heading east. That is roughly east, that one. I saw some uh, reflective things up there. See those right there? Off in the distance right there? Oh yeah. Let's take a look. Yeah, let's, let's walk. I'm wondering if these are just like some sort of gate blocking 
the road up there or something. Might be some sort of access trail for like uh, rangers in case they need to get like a little 4x4 four four on here or something. Yeah, it looks like a gate to me. Well, this is definitely not the right way. Yeah, like you can see tracks in here actually, so they've definitely driven a vehicle in here. Yeah, it doesn't really say anything. Well, we found another inexplicable split in the road. Uh, it's not marked on the map, I don't think. I would tend towards going downhill, just because <laughs> that'd be nice and easy, but... It turned out the left path was the correct one. Brian had spotted some trailblazes that pointed us downhill. In the meantime, Andrew looked at a few more plants. So Brian was just pointing this fuzzy little bud out. I'm pretty sure it's bitternut hickory. It's definitely some sort of hickory. Some of the clues are the shape of the bud itself, but also the shape of the leaf scars that are all along this twig here. It's nice and fuzzy, but yeah, kind of weird seeing it in February. But I am excited for spring, so that's good. It was just a short ways up the trail before we saw a potentially suitable campsite off the path. Alright, we're gonna see if we can find a campsite up here. And if we can't, we'll just set up. Does it actually go anywhere though? Huh? It doesn't seem like it goes much further than this, but it does seem workable. Yo, bear. This is not bad. It's not great. It's on an incline, but we could cook back here. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that seems good. Let's do it. Yeah? Yeah. We can set the tarp up right here. Okay. Brian can set his tent up right there. It was a bit cramped, but it was late at night, and there was enough room to eat and sleep. And so, we got to work. The warmth of the night air made us feel calm and content as we set up our shelters. It was nice being out when the temperature was so comfortable. And with the warm weather, I jumped at the chance to sleep beneath my tarp, where I could feel the open air. After all that, it was time for a simple supper. The avocados are actually fairly ripe this time. <laughs> Today, I figured we'd make some sort of a bastardization of salsa. We got some black beans, some diced tomatoes, and avocados. Hopefully we're hungry so we can finish all this. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's kind of a lot. <laughs> Just use one avocado. <laughs> you know, it's kind of surprising how many people don't know the correct way to open an avocado. <laughs> I mean, like, usually, I wouldn't say there's a right way to do something, but in this case, it's pretty cut and dry. Literally. <laughs> anyway, this is, uh, we're just gonna dip some tortillas into this. Okay. And hope it tastes good. <laughs> I mean, once we eat some of it, we can add more avocados and it'll make it a little more solid and less liquid. <laughs> Seems about par for the course. <laughs> I mean, well, let's give it a taste. Tastes great. Yeah. And what are these? <laughs> tortillas. They're kale tortillas? Yeah, yeah. Mm, I knew they were tortillas. <laughs> 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 gonna... Not why are they green? <laughs> Actually, no, well, when I, when, you, when I said... <laughs> They're tortillas. I was like, that's probably not what he was asking. <laughs> <laughs> so I corrected myself and said they're kale tortillas. <laughs> <laughs> that's what she said. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> it's good, right? Yeah, you can get all the ingredients in, but once you do... <laughs> <laughs> oh, here you go, here you go. You just use a whole tortilla. Oh, yeah, yeah. 
I'm gonna make a sandwich. Yeah, what are we thinking? A burrito. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe I'm my, my terminology right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like something you eat when you're like a bachelor in college. <laughs> <laughs> you know, have you ever like noticed that certain cultural foods kind of do seem like a, <laughs> like a euro? I was just thinking about this today. Like some dude just took. <laughs> normal food and put it in a piece of bread <laughs> instead of on a eating dish. <laughs> eating dish. <laughs> well, like a lot of Japanese food seems like that to me too. <laughs> you know, like, like a ball of rice. <laughs> so you got the pita pocket going here. Oh, there you, yeah, yeah, yeah. good job. The pita pocket. <laughs> mm, let's follow the thing. <laughs> Where's that bread bowl, George. <laughs> Feeling satisfied from dinner, we headed to our shelters. Good night. We had heard it might rain tonight, and Robbie was a bit apprehensive about sleeping under the tarp. It rained last time we were here on the first night. Yeah, and we had a tarp. And it, we got a little wet. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. The warm air and stars quickly put my fears to rest. And before long, I was at rest as well. We drifted off to sleep beneath the clear night sky, snugly embraced by our sleeping bags. But then... I fell asleep for a little while. Oh yeah, I was asleep for a while. But I could hear the lightning just now. It's weird because the sky was just so clear earlier. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> I might join you. Because when it's raining and I need to pee, it's gonna suck. <laughs> now we're gonna find out just how sturdy this tarp is. <laughs> you can just hear and feel the wind start picking up and the, the air getting chillier. It's really ominous. It was still dry outside, but the distant thunder, dropping temperatures, and strengthening winds meant it was just a matter of time before rain started falling. While we were hiking, I was like, oh man, I'm glad I didn't bring my tent. It's so light. <laughs> but now I'm like, mm, maybe that tent would be kind of nice right now. But this is also what makes it exciting. <laughs> I'm not feeling super good about the tarp. <laughs> oh, oh, rain starting. It just started. Wow. Well, now it's the true test. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll all have to be in Brian's tent. <laughs> okay, now the question is how long does this last? Yeah, that's it's fun. certainly coming down quite hard. <laughs> not bad so far, okay. All right, feeling a little, you know, a little nervous, but it's not, not too bad. <laughs> Walls are sagging in a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> The open holes that are kind of... Oh yeah, I feel some moisture. It's like the wind, there. man. It's like... Yeah, that wind is strong. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, it's hailing! I think it's hailing! Yep! It was so warm that we had forgotten to put oh, our rain jackets now. on. Now was as good a time as any, I suppose. It's a strong end. I mean, we're doing good. We're doing good. But yeah, it's not so bad so far. Not too bad, not too bad, not terrible. Not great, not great. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was just a pretty strong burst. I think we'll be okay. Yeah, I don't wanna, I don't wanna jinx it or nothing, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna jinx it. <laughs> Okay? Yeah, so far. Right. We'll let you know. <laughs> this will be a reverse wane or something. <laughs> We're in sort of a dip right now, so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a little concerning. We're doing it right. Just make it a Holy crap! <laughs> That was the loudest thunder I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Quick update. We're alive and it's raining not too hard. Hoping that the storm is gonna pass really quickly. 
I'm very comfortable right now. What about you? Yeah. It's snug as a bug in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, I take it back. <laughs> We're at your mercy. <laughs> that sounded like it was like right above us. <laughs> the rain is definitely let up. Yeah, the rain is the... I think that was the brunt of it. Yeah. I think we're in the clear. <laughs> <laughs> it's like we just better not test the guns. <laughs> we know we leave it to you, good sir. <laughs> <laughs> the storm. I don't want to say it out loud. <laughs> Yeah, I don't feel anything out there. Well, I can use this water to get the tomato paste off my hands. <laughs> okay, I think we're safe to go to sleep then. Yeah. We'll update you if anything happens. <laughs> Looks like the storm had a second wind. Died down and then it's peaceful for a while. <laughs> Started back up. I'm so tired that I just like I don't even have the energy to care that if I get wet. <laughs> I was about to say it doesn't seem as bad, but uh <laughs> Well on the plus side our tarp is like drooping enough that it's preventing as much rain from coming in. Oh yeah. I think this will pass by. You keep okay. telling yourself that. <laughs> slept really, really well, but everything got wet. Clothes, sleeping bag, sleeping mat, me. And the weather dropped like 20 or 30 degrees. Although the storm had passed, and the sun was shining, the morning air was frigid. Even with the rain, we had fallen asleep warm and comfortable, but now we were shivering in the cold. Eventually, we all woke up, and as our things dried, we talked about last night's storm. So how's your night? <laughs> <laughs> Mine was relatively warm and dry, but the whole night I kept waking up and I'm like, I wonder if they drowned or something. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you didn't hear us talking anymore. Yeah, when it was just like, constant rain and lightning, I was like, I don't hear them at all. Like, I feel like I hear some sort of reaction. <laughs> you couldn't hear us laughing? When the storm first rolled in, I was like, I heard you all the time. <laughs> we were cackling like jackals. <laughs> <laughs> and then at some point, I think you guys fell asleep and just accepted. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> at some point, exactly what happened. we were just like, okay. <laughs> at one point, I think my leg was sticking outside of the turf. <laughs> It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, my whole back was wet. And I don't know how that happened. It was really weird. Man, I stayed dry somehow. I was looking at this little setup here after you guys set your tarp up. Yeah, it's that like looks kind of like a natural yeah. river formation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you were blocking all the water flow from me or something. <laughs> With our things fairly dry, we packed up and got ready to head out on the trail. It 
was good to get moving and warm our bodies up, but the sun kept hiding behind the clouds. Along the trail, Andrew spotted a few notable plants. So here we've got a vine plant. It's got some tiny thorns on it and these little tendrils on it to grab onto things. And these really distinct kind of heart-shaped leaves with parallel veins. And this is in the genus Smilax. Um, actually, I don't know if it's Smilax or Smilax. But <laughs> this particular one has red spots on it. I'm not actually too sure why, but you can actually eat the vine. You'll see this growing a lot, like even in the cold season, it'll still be green. So it's good to know. Although Smilax vines are often tough and thorny, in the warm season, their tender growing apex is edible when boiled. Nearby, we also saw some striped wintergreen, which is said to have various medicinal properties. And a bit further down, we saw some fungi too. This is called hexagonal pored polypore. So on the back, they've got these very geometric pores where all the spores come out of. And yeah, I imagine they just grow on this dead wood and usually the branches just fall off and that's why you find them on the ground so much. These are really nice specimens. Hopefully because of the rain, we'll find some more mushrooms. Well, speak of the devil, uh, Brian found these, wood ears. And it's a type of jelly fungus. <laughs> you can see why it's called that. These are edible, and I think maybe we're gonna take some of these and cook later. Doesn't look like too much, but yeah, I'll try them out. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, this beautiful pink fungus is like a pink coral fungus. Obviously there's that coral color, and then underneath, they've got these sort of toothy looking pores where, where the spores come off. Look at that color. The fungus is actually called the coral pink maruleus and its pore surface is actually a series of ridges and folds. We continued on the trail and stumbled across a nice looking campsite, albeit with some precarious looking dead wood hanging overhead. You know, I had a feeling that there was gonna be a really nice campsite not too far from where we stood. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this one's been really great. Although, with the wind going, maybe it would have felt a little scary with And just downhill from the campsite, we got to see something really fascinating. Brian found this mushroom, but this, if I recall correctly, is called Calistoma lutescens, but it's like very phallic shaped. And I, I would I say that because there's an actual genus of mushrooms called phallus, <laughs> um, but this is actually not in that. But you can see it's got this like long sort of weird spongy shaft and this poofy thing with spores in it at the top. But it looks like it, it's out of spores now. <laughs> It's just, this looks like something from an alien planet or something, and I love it. It's really weird. So weird, yeah. We hiked down some steep and muddy slopes, and soon there was fascinating geology to complement the flora. Although these sandstone structures are found throughout the eastern U.S., they never fail to impress us, especially when they're covered in plant life and a colorful palette of lichen. While admiring the rocky bluffs, we decided to have a snack provided to us by our buddy Tim Lawson. Oh, wow, that looks good. They were really tasty, and an excellent hiking snack. Cheers. A bit further down, I spotted evidence of a familiar tree. Whoa. This, ooh, it's really soggy. This prehistoric looking, 
I don't know. I don't know how you even describe it, but this is the seed pod of a magnolia tree. And as you see, plenty of these huge leaves right here. I mean, this, this looks like something that came from the age of the dinosaur, you know? That is so gnarly, especially the texture of the stem down here. Yeah, it looks like an egg. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it's a like Yoshi a face egg. Like, <laughs> as daunting as the rain was, this trail served as a reminder that water creates beauty, whether it be the magnificent cliffs or the life teeming in the soil below. So over here we actually have some beautiful oyster mushrooms. It's one of the grayer varieties, I forget exactly what the species is, but you do tend to see these like around this time of year, even without the unusually warm weather we've been having. It's got all the characteristic gills and it's a very beautiful specimen, but it's so small and uh, we've eaten some already. I think I'm just gonna leave it there. Unless you wanna eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna touch them. <gasps> Hello. <laughs> There's like water dripping into this hole here. It must continue from the rocks that are up there. And it was this water that created the perfect habitat for critters like this eastern newt. The trail wound downward past rhododendrons and moss-covered boulders before finally revealing a trail junction. Junction. That's good to know. <laughs> it's about time. So we're going to Rock Bridge, right? Yep, Rock Bridge. Okay. Guess so it's, that's this way. Yeah, that that's way. Okay. Headed down that and then coming back the next day. Yep, yeah. this is where I'll be coming back. Okay. So are we deciding if we're going to go all the way to Rockbridge or not? Uh, Let's take a look at the map. We'd originally planned on seeing a landmark called the Rock yeah, Bridge, but it was likely too far off of a hike for the amount of time we had. What do you think? Yeah, let's just go. Let's go and let's make it up as we go. <laughs> we decided to hike towards it and play things by ear. Either way, there was plenty of beautiful sights to see just from our trail. We came to a rock shelter with a trickling waterfall. It was a nostalgic sight, reminiscent of our first camping trip at Hocking Hills a decade ago. And of course, with the water comes more mushrooms to admire. Okay, so all along this log we've got these Edible slime molds, they're a little too slimy right now maybe, but it's called witch's butter. I've seen it several times before actually. But here we have something called deadly gallerina. It's got a really nice round cap. It's poisonous, if you couldn't tell from the name, deadly gallerina. But it's actually a lookalike to an edible fungus that grows around this time called Flamelina velitipis, also known as golden needle mushroom. So the golden needle mushroom gives its name because when you buy it in stores, it looks like a really thin kind of gold mushroom. Um, but when it grows in the wild, it looks very similar to this. There's just a few key differences, which is that the edible one has no ring on the stem or skirt, and at the bottom of the edible mushroom stem, you'll usually see like a black velvety portion of it. So yeah, don't get them confused. We also saw this beautiful orange crowded parchment mushroom, Sterium complicatum. <laughs> this is just like, wherever the water cares to flow is where the path is. <laughs> We continued along rough, muddy trails and spotted a small offshoot from the trail. We decided to investigate it in hopes of finding a campsite. Instead, we found a rock on the riverbank with someone's old litter sitting on it. The river itself was beautiful, but with how fast it was moving, we suspected it may have been partly responsible for the refuse that was left behind. Someone must have set up here and maybe the water got really high and they just like kind of abandoned it. It was disappointing to see such a beautiful place tarnished by someone's trash, but we tried to make the best of it. <laughs> it's a 
Robin Hood. <laughs> we hiked back up, carrying the litter that we found up onto the trail. We didn't have any room to spare in our packs, but at least here, someone could find it and hike it out, and it wouldn't get swept away by the river. And with that, we continued on in search for a campsite. And along the way, we spotted these strange looking American climbing ferns. Amid the shelter of some large boulders, we decided to take a quick lunch break. Wow, it's funny, as soon as you stop, it gets like really chilly. Yeah. yeah. Wow, it's strange how much the temperature changes in one night. Yeah. It was like 80 degrees when we were driving here. Yeah. <laughs> if it was like five or 10 degrees colder than the weather predicted, I would have been in trouble because <clears> this is all I brought. Man, I hope we find a campsite soon. <laughs> The trail took us up onto a ridge top before snaking along more sandstone bluffs. We came to a particularly large bluff. Here, we saw another path shooting off of the trail and decided to check for a workable campsite. We could uh, eat here. I mean, there's, there's firewood right there. Yeah, did you say there's something over there we could camp at? Looks like it. <laughs> now, like just over there, it looks like there's a good place. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. I was talking about that green area. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so either. Well, I mean, this spot's fine. You guys are fine with it. I'm fine with it. We'll be in the space though. Let's check. Let's take a look. <laughs> yeah, it looks a little bit slanted and there's probably not enough room for a tent and a tarp. Yeah. Let's keep looking, I guess. I think we can keep looking. The sun came out. I think yeah. that's a good sign we can keep moving. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Let's do it. And so it was back on the trail. We were just about to reach a steep uphill when we saw another path weaving through the thickets of rhododendrons. Whoa, that, that we found our campsite. We found our campsite. Yeah, this is it. Yeah, that looks great. This is it. And this even has a trail going down to it, so it's definitely a campsite of some sort. That's helpful too, because we were just about to get to another uphill section. <laughs> Ooh, ah. Oh yeah! Oh my god! This is one of the best campsites we've ever had. This is perfect. Wow. Someone's even got a little dining area all set up for us. It was a good thing we hadn't settled earlier because yeah, this was a fantastic campsite. This was some prime real estate, and with a luxurious view of the river and giant boulders that looked like castle ruins from a fantasy novel. And the best part was, it was all practically free. But you can't just fall into the lap of luxury without some delicious food. Got a really good meal to prepare for these guys tonight, but it needs a little preparation, so Andrew and I are gonna get started. This one will keep a little bit and we actually need to hang on to these. And for this thicker piece, I will use a saw, which I finally have a decent one of. <laughs> Brian's got his cowboy Dundee, or <laughs> crocodile Dundee. <laughs> actually, it's uh, kind of serendipitous that we did find green wood because the things that Brian is working on, it's kind of nice to have green wood so that they won't burn. You aren't supposed to cut any living wood, but you do often stumble across some that's been cut down by other campers or knocked over by strong winds. If that's the case, you might as well put it to good use.
After preparing all that, it was time to get the fire started. And while I prepared some tinder and kindling, Brian continued on with his culinary machinations. Got a few more things to prepare. Bell peppers, some onions, let's get chopping. Side note, I actually recently learned how to properly cut a bell pepper so that you can get rid of all the seeds. There you go. Perfect piece of bell pepper. Got one more thing to do. Onion. I want some nice big chunks for these. And we're ready to go. Okay, so in the past you've seen me use my ferro rod and my knife over here to strike sparks and start a fire. On occasion, I've used the edge of my knife. Now the reason for this is because the back of it is not sharp enough. I know it's the wrong way to do it, it's just it wasn't sharp enough on the back, it's a cheap knife, I can resharpen the edge anytime. But, just for you, we have this beautiful, beautiful giant ferro rod and striker with perfect 90 degree angles on all edges. And this is from Ernie Garcia, and he actually gave us a note, so I'm gonna read the note really quick. Andrew, truly love your videos on Adventure Archives. I've watched you use a ferro rod many times, and I wanna give you a beauty. It is a beauty. This rod is from Nathan4071 on YouTube slash eBay. It's the best. I made the handles for you out of oak. Enjoy. P.S. Enjoy the Louisiana fatwood. Yes, he gave us some fatwood. Thank you so much, Ernie Garcia. We're gonna start the fire. So, for those of you who don't know, fatwood is wood from a some sort of coniferous tree with lots of resin in it, basically. This stuff is just super flammable, so. And this is a great way to get a fire started on a wet day such as this. There you go, see that, how that burns? That stuff just goes up so well, if I don't put it out, at least. Oh yeah. So while Andrew tends to the fire over there, I'm gonna start skewering this. It still smells good. I uh, froze everything beforehand and then kept it really cool. <laughs> Seems my skewer's a little large, but we'll make do. Got a lot of meat, so I'm gonna eat good tonight. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this would usually be where we put some compelling philosophy, but today we simply provide you with gratuitous imagery of spit-roasted kebabs. Skewered meat. It's pretty hard to beat this when it comes to food cooked at a campsite. 
It's a dish that seems at once both primal and gourmet. <clears throat> oh, baby, look at that. Hi, guys. You guys ready? Yep. Oh, yeah. Do you want a red orange pepper? Not an orange pepper. <laughs> <laughs> Some onion, Andrew? Sure. Let's take it. Uh, <laughs> answer. No. <laughs> All right. First piece of meat. Bobby, I'll let you have it. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Medium rare. <laughs> <laughs> Did you pre-flavor it? Oh. Man. I told you I got a good cut of meat though. <laughs> <laughs> that natural beef. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of meat was it? <laughs> <laughs> Sirloin. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna take this stick. <laughs> I got I gotta work on this meat by myself. Oh, wow, look at it. It's like a lance. <laughs> Gotta get below the smoke. This is so good. <laughs> wow, you really don't need sauce, actually. Like that. I guess that hunger sauce is the best sauce. <laughs> it's a triforce of beef. <laughs> wow, I really feel like a band of hunter-gatherers right now. <laughs> Just eating meat from the fire. Man. This meat that we hunted and these vegetables that we foraged at Kroger's. <laughs> <laughs> at market store. <laughs> and after that, we took the woodier mushrooms and mixed them with whatever leftovers we had. And while we waited for those to cook, I had one more treat for the evening. If you've seen our Japan episode, the cup noodles were so good that I decided that we needed to have it again. The rest of the food was cooked and we got ready for round two by the toasty fire. We'll just start in order. So here we go, shrimp. Time for some chopsticks. Spicy chicken for me. Beef for Andrew. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm. Gentlemen, too evil. No. <laughs> <laughs> Some beef for my beef. <laughs> oh, my God. So good. Mm. <laughs> yeah, we gotta bring cup noodles every time. <laughs> <laughs> the warmth just like fills your mm. body. This turned out amazingly well. Yeah. Wow. Vegetables actually cook. And here we've got some woodier, which is actually a classic ingredient with ramen. Mm -hmm. See how it is. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Wow, my life is complete. <laughs> <laughs> how do you like the woodier? Oh, weird. Or wood. You say weird? No, it's good. Oh. <laughs> it's the wood that makes it good. <laughs> <laughs> this is a feast of us for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> These vegetables are great. Yeah, those veggies are actually tender. Look at the view too, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> this is more luxurious than most restaurants. <laughs> <laughs> With our bellies full, we relaxed by the fire long into the evening. It was a chilly night, but good conversations and camaraderie have a way of pushing discomfort to the back of one's mind. The cold air, the waning light, and the ever-shifting fire reminded us to, once in a while, practice a bit of mindfulness, to be aware of our surroundings and all the sensations we experienced, and to even appreciate the ups and downs that come with life. It's important to stay in the moment and to remember that every sensation, whether the pleasurable warmth of the fire or the biting cold of winter's breath, is an aspect of being alive. And it's through mindfully experiencing these things that we grow in mind, body, and spirit.
It had been a frigid night, and the rising sun, beautiful as it was, did little to warm us up. Tender joint. Tender joint. Where is it? It's right there. Come on. At the behest of Robbie, I hurriedly got the morning fire going. And before okay. long, it was breakfast time. Oatmeal square. <laughs> <laughs> got some sardines cooking on the fire. And of course, coffee. We didn't bring cups, so we used these pour-over packets like tea bags instead. Oh yeah, no, it's good. I hope you guys are thirsty. <laughs> that's actually not bad. Oh, that's what I've been waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> the sun rose higher, and we wandered down the riverbank to feel its warm embrace. It was an absolutely beautiful morning. The sunshine shimmered off of the river's surface, and all the plant life glowed in its light. This was the kind of morning that you wanted to experience fully in the moment unimpeded by the usual stresses or anxieties of society. Between the fire, the sun, and the coffee, we felt warm and ready to break camp. Somehow, it felt appropriate that we were experiencing the last bout of winter on our last day in the wild. It seemed the season still had some bite left. As for us, we had a bit of a hike ahead of us. Unfortunately, one of my socks was a bit ill-suited for the journey ahead. Let's try a little too hard to dry the sock off. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even the flames though, that's, that's what's annoying. What well, was it, just embers? Or? It was just on the rock. Oh. Cooked it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now it was time to head out, but first I wanted to search around the campsite one last time for a few interesting plants. This here is some hay scented fern which we actually saw in Allegheny. Got more of these partridge berry vines. And this is rattlesnake plantain here. You see it's got these veins in this really interesting pattern. And this little seed pod is why it's called the rattlesnake plantain. Oh, look, you can actually see smoke coming off. We've also got the striped wintergreen here. Finally, an old classic wood sorrels just growing out of this moss here. Yummy. And with that, we were off. It was a short but steep hike back to the trail. Well, the trail was a lot closer than I thought. Yeah, it wasn't actually too bad. But man, I saw that yesterday. I'm glad we camped here. continued on, passing by the huge rocky bluffs that we had seen the previous day. We wandered through tangles of trees, and soon, the trail took us higher up among the cliffs.
Before long, we had returned to the trail junction, where we stopped for a snack. Call it? It's like a ham and On cheese sandwich. sandwich. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. yeah, meat and cheese is mm, a no. great combination. <laughs> you guys remember those cheese-filled sausages we had in Shenandoah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And we boiled them on this giant gas stove. <laughs> but Man. you ate it right off of that knife, I think. Yeah, I oh, yeah! Because yeah. <laughs> we didn't have any forks. We there. fashioned a cup out, out of, of the a water plastic bottle. water bottle. <laughs> and then we used the other half to like a make spoon, a spoon. A spoon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we were like using that to drink soup. And like the other part, we were like using the empty tin can to drink soup. <laughs> Good times. <laughs> After a bit of reminiscing, it was on to the unfamiliar with us. This section of the trail wound up and down. Not far from the junction, we had found another campsite, which we decided to explore. Makes me wish we had another night out or something. Yeah, that is a nice campsite. Holy moly. Ooh. Is about to come crashing down. It's not even resting on anything. There's some uh, fungal rhizomorphs, <laughs> which probably means it's even less structurally sound. <laughs> okay, the weather is just warm enough. I think we're gonna go for a swim. We initially wanted to just dip our feet in the water for a bit, but... How could we call it an Adventure Archives episode if we don't get naked into freezing cold water? <laughs> I know it looks sunny and nice, but it's cold right now. <laughs> okay, do we have a plan of attack here? No. <laughs> well, we gotta breathe! Okay. We weren't very eager to leave, but alas, we had to keep hiking. It's amazing how much beauty we can pass up in day-to-day -day life when we forget to be in the moment with an awareness of the things happening right before our eyes. Of course, there are times when beauty reveals itself more effortlessly.
funny how like, I don't know, between the color of the rocks and the lichen and the way the water splatters on it, it's like, it's like some sort of watercolor for painting. Maybe the water's red here. <laughs> I think That's it's solid. Red river. Small iron deposits resting. It must be, yeah. There's beauty everywhere we look, even in things that we often disregard as unpleasant or unimportant. Do you know what it is? It looks like some sort of polypore. Some sort of polypore. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the extent of my mushroom knowledge. <laughs> even these ambiguous polypores, called Tramedes elegans, have an intricate beauty to them for those who pay attention. Holy mama! Look at the fungus on that. Yeah. Or algae or something. We can't realistically spend all our time in the wild, where the beauty of each moment in life is made easily apparent. Most days, we forget to observe the magnificent wonders happening all around us, and life rolls by while we look the other way. It can be easy to forget just how incredible existence is. Too often as we sit indoors, doing jobs that we think are pointless, the highs and lows of life erode away, leaving a barren field where mountains and valleys once stood. out in the wild when we can remember, as individuals, what it is to be human. The hard rock, the cold wind, and the fresh air filling our lungs wipe away the haze left in our minds by everyday life and induce in us a feeling of being human. It's out here that we remember that both crippling pain and ecstatic pleasure are integral parts of life, ever swirling about in balance. But it's at home, in the cities, and on the streets, hand in hand with other people, where we can fight and struggle to remember as a whole society the fundamental truths of humanity. We are a species that gravitates towards cooperation in the face of adversity, kindness when confronted by pain, and above all else, love. When you forget what it is to be human, step outdoors, Close your eyes and let the fresh air fill your heart.
Thank you very much for watching. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Viewers just like yourself went to patreon.com slash adventure to help support the show, including Sunjian Huang, Trails We Hike, check out their YouTube channel, and John Truitt, who wanted to give a shout out to Andy and Jenny Trimble, who live in New Braunfels, Texas. Also, another special shout out to Paul Chandler, Greg Cribb, Hon Lung, Jim Potts, and T. Bryce Ryan. I wanted to remind everybody to keep sharing and caring. Thank you and to all of our patrons. We'll see you next time. How are you feeling? Good. <laughs> what, if, <laughs> what if you called it an Alley 81? <laughs> Wait, so is it a late one or is it a late? Both, I think. Oh. <laughs> I'll have an all day AG1, please. <laughs> you know what the worst part about ordering pizza is? Like, you order it and you're like, man, I'm gonna eat in no time. And you're like, they have to make an entire pizza. <laughs> okay, so you got olives, broccoli, mushrooms, onions, yep. barbecue sauce. Yep. That's it? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's chat out. <laughs> yes, go. I'm gonna taste it this time. <laughs> mm. It's actually less sweet than most sauce. Mm, indescribable. <laughs> oh, I forgot they have the pieces of sausage. Maybe. Oh, no. <coughs> you better eat this. <laughs> okay. We can use this. <laughs> Is it clean? It's clean enough. <laughs> We're cutting cheese with it, so. mm. I don't know what your definition of clean enough is. That's <laughs> mm. still. <laughs> so it's good. It'd be better with tomato paste. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, why don't you grab this classic one for the table of How's it? <coughs> Delicious. I will never let Andrew order another pizza again. <laughs> I think it's delicious. <laughs> I got two thumbs up. <laughs> it's terrible. Miguel's pizza was delicious as always. Now we are going home. I'm gonna have to turn this light off because I can't see anything. <laughs>
a bit of hassle where like law enforcement would ask us what we were doing. Or it was like, like something really bad. Case, <laughs> Worst case scenario is some what sort of like drug dealer. It was like 3 a.m. Oh. 4 a.m. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that is pretty dark late. at night. Yeah. Yeah, if it was like midnight, then maybe, yeah, somebody was out too late. But 3 a.m., it's yeah. whoever it is, you don't want to. Know. Yeah, those burger rates. <laughs> uh, steal our burgers. <laughs> Crave rates. <laughs> Crave often. <laughs> That's the story. <laughs> yeah, that's a good story. <laughs> that's what you said. The White Castle story. What yeah, did I think? Water fountain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> water fountain. <laughs> <laughs> probably were thinking ring rates too. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, good night. <laughs> <laughs>